Hello, everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino. Thanks for joining us. This is part of a live tech talk we do every Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook and YouTube. So thanks for joining us. Um, we're here to talk about my favorite subject, subject and yours, Jeeps, and how to build your Jeep with more cool parts. Uh, today, we have a special guest or guests from Switch Pros. So we're going to get to them in just a minute. Um, as always, we welcome your questions and comments. So you simply type in something on the live feed and uh, we've got Debbie here, Jamie here and Alex here to also help read the comments, uh, describe as much as you can about your vehicle so we can better answer your question. All right, uh, of course, our special guests, that's gonna be our feature today. Um, quickly, I wanna give you an update on a brand new product we mentioned a couple times, which is our TJ to LJ conversion. So I promised you guys I would show you a couple of quick pictures of it. So this is the, the kit installed in uh, Jamie's Growler. You can see it's a complete uh, new interior. The, these are options. We've separated the interior and the, the frame as two separate part numbers. Um, here's the way that it, it goes inside the tub. So it reconnects with all the bolts that hold on the corner guards. And then you get brand new inner fender wells and floor, including the built-in uh, fuel pump access plate. This is what the frame extension looks like. So the rear there is the stock. We extend the frame back. You get a tracer style shock tower and bump stop extending the wheelbase. So you'd be at the same wheelbase as one of our tracers at 115. So pretty, pretty exciting. You still get the 26 gallon gas tank. And this is gonna come with a brand new rear bumper as all part of that frame extension kit. And this, you can do this on uh, one of our legend suspensions or our tracer suspension. So kind of up to you. This just shows you a couple different things with the inner fender wells installed. So now what I want to talk to you about is some of our featured products. And of course, uh, right on cue, I'm going to talk about hood louvers. Yeah. Um, my, my target price on that kit, the, both the frame and the interior is coming in right at six or 7,000 for the kit. So, okay. So we're getting there. I'm probably the, the actual physical parts are right here. Right, you know, the interior parts, I, I brought some over. They're uh, eighth inch thick aluminum, really nice quality, all formed and ready to be installed. So um, yeah, we're, we're real close on that. I'm just working at, you know, material prices have been changing. So I'm trying to kind of finalize all the pricing on that. So bear with me, but by the time it's available, we'll have that. More questions, are we okay? Okay. So next is hood louvers. Um, you can see the, the heat being able to get out of here. Um, this would mount on your hood. It's pretty easy to cut the holes inside there. You can do them as round holes, or you can take a jigsaw and cut out a bunch. It's up to you. Um, with summertime on us, you know, I want you to be aware of that under temperature hood. We also offer um, other ones that are, that are smaller and easier to put on. And you can do just a couple of these or you know, some that are this shape. Uh, we've got all these on our website. They're easy to find. If you just go to the search box and type in louver, it'll pull up all the hood louvers we offer. So that's real easy. Next thing I wanna show you, I just got asked about this yesterday. And that is, um, you know, we've, we've had tube fenders for a long time. Well, this one is one of our original tube fenders. I'm gonna kind of balance it right here. And what I wanted to show you is that this slopes with the hood. So the hood would go on here and uh, this stays real narrow and tight. We call this our Boulder series. This is available for the CJ, the YJ, the TJ, and the LJ. So if you're looking for something that's uh, a little bit tighter to the hood, I mean, this is just, you know, that much off the hood. Um, that's a great option for you as well. All right, any questions on that, Deb? Just a couple of, couple of uh, viewers have like the design. Okay, good. All right. Um, all right. Let's introduce our guests, Robert and Laura. Come on over here. All right. 
These are the owners, founders. How, how long have you guys been in business? I don't even know. Well, we've been in business for uh, 22 years, actually. It was 22 years in January. Our corporate name that some know us as is Off-Road Engineering, and we actually started by making throttle control systems and high idle systems. But because Robert has been an enthusiast and he kind of sucked me into this whole this whole concept. <laughs> I think um, my wife right? would say the same. Right? <laughs> I mean, kicking and screaming, no, actually, literally, um, you know, I was always a bit of an adrenaline junction, junkie. He wanted to begin outfitting, it was what, a, a, a JK, right? The 07 JK, I believe? Oh, YJ. Oh. Oh, way back. Started with a YJ on the high oh. idle controller? Oh, no, yeah. I'm I, sorry. I, I'm years past that. <laughs> I fast forwarded. I tend to do that. I'm sorry. Um, but he wanted to put LED lights on the JK. That was when that was new. And he had an idea. Robert actually comes from um, the technology industry. So electronics, for him, electronics, manufacturing. Sem semiconductor and electronics manufacturing. So he wanted to build a solid state system so that when he put lights and accessories on the Jeep, he actually had a really compact, efficient way to turn didn't them want to, to deal with them. relays but yeah the old dorky relays right? yeah. and running all these wires yeah. back and Everywhere. forth that's where this came in and people laugh about the story in 2014 and in, in march he came to me and he said i want to take this to market and i said okay I, what is that going to take and he said i want to take it to the sema show and i said because i had to set myself is, a deadline yeah, right. so it's never going right. to yeah, done. <laughs> and Robert is not a procrastinator, but when you know when you're living the day to day and running your business, the the projects, the special projects, kind of Stack get shelved. Up. Yeah, they and they just wait for you to have time. Well, we yeah. all know that there's never the right time. Right. So he set himself a deadline of SEMA that year, and I said that's October. I you know I didn't know a lot about the show. We had never been because it was never relative to the business we were in, and so he said, I if I can make it happen, if you can make it happen, and we showed up to SEMA that year. Um, you know, we, we had a nice presentation. We won best new interior accessory product for yeah. the predecessor to this product here. And from there, the momentum gained. And awesome. here we are, we have five SEMA trophies. You know, we have three global media awards, two best new interior accessory products. Um, and you know, now he's, he and his team are unstoppable. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you guys are deep people. Exactly. So that's, yeah. that's good yeah. too. Yeah. We have a, a small fleet. As awesome. A of fact. Okay. So let's tell everybody about what Switch Bros is, um, kind of technically, right? Right. Um, I described it earlier as a power distribution module and you said it's a switching system, a, a, a solid state switching system. Yeah, solid state switch panel system okay you know okay because we don't do data logging or anything like that but all the other programming is in there you know and obviously there's no relays needed no fuses because the current limits are actually set in the app so you can change them in five amp increments so it's just like setting your fuse you know okay. and then yeah we have the eight switch eight output over here the sp9100 and then here's the Racer Force 12, which has 12 switches and 17 outputs. So, so let's just uh, tell everybody about, start over here and tell them about it, um, kind of like you were talking to me before, or, right. or as you would at a trade show, right? Yeah. And then um, we can kind of go back and forth. And I'm, Debbie, are you getting any questions yet? Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Products look. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Cool. Um, I'll put on like my little church hat. Okay, quick. Like, sure. sure. I'll, I'll show you um, if, you can, if the microphone is still picking yeah. up. So this system here is actually, this really is the footprint of the system. In fact, we have we have a sample right here. This is a lot of people will come to the show and they'll want to look at w what's behind, what else is under here. The only reason we have this built up is so that we can wire, you know, that we're not trying and to- And recess the lights, off. yes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. it's pretty, right? Yeah. And people come up and so that we can actually have a place to mount everything. This really is the sum total of what that power module looks like. It looks like it's three by six. Um, it's all solid state. It's, it's filled in with epoxy and all the drivers are actually in here. So all the capability, there's a board it's in thin. here and it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's rugged though. I mean, it, it would be a worthy weapon if you, if you <laughs> um, and so what happens is this is designed to go under the hood. It houses eight circuits. So basically the way we split the panel up is this, these four circuits, which are switches one, two, three, and four, they're rated at a max load of 20 amps each. Okay. These four, which is five, six, seven, and eight, can, can handle 35 amps each for a total combined of 125 amps in this system. 
Um, they're all direct connect. So this harness actually is your out. These, these are your output leads plus your ignition signal. So these the, wires go straight to the light. They, they do. Or right. the horn and or the fan or whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. Okay. They direct wire to the hot leads on your accessories. Um, you can solder and heat shrink, or we include for people who maybe that isn't their gig. We include heat shrinkable butt spices, which are watertight and non-corrosive. Um, and then, and your ground wire. Our system also comes with a fuse battery cable. So this is where the only fuse is that's needed. It has an inline fuse. Big for giant one. Right, it's 125 yeah. amp. Okay. And it's right in line. And then this, all this is, is actually the communication that carries the signals from the touch panel to the power module. Then obviously the information goes out through these, power goes out through these to the accessories. Um, so as I indicated, or Robert indicated, these are eight switches, eight circuits, 125 amps. The Racer Force 12 we built because there was such a demand for um, higher output, more higher output, um, inrush tolerance. Is that the right language? Yeah, more inrush for, you know, for running fans um, and you know, fans, fuel, pumps. fuel pumps, that sort of thing. Uh, um, and then also a little more amperage um, as well as some, some other features that people ask for. So this system here is actually capable of 150 amps and you can run it at 150. I mean, it will be fine at okay. 150 And this amps. one was what? 125. So that's still pretty so, close. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, just, you have a question. Oh, just got <laughs> Ashton and brother asked if these power modules and switches are waterproof. Yes, they are. So I Austin was asking if they're waterproof and yes, the I-267 is, yes. is the rating. What we do say is on the touch panel, Best not, like if you had it in a side-by-side, -side, best not to hit it with a pressure washer because we don't want to infuse water. You know, we don't want to force water behind, um, you know, the face of the touch panel. If yep. it's polycarbonate, it can absolutely withstand moisture, mud, dust like crazy, um, which is different than like if you see a touch screen type concepts. Those are, you know, you can't, th those won't withstand the dust because... It's yeah, actually, we epoxy uh, seal yeah. the wires oh, from in the, the back of it. <laughs> So I don't know if you can. Now, is that machined aluminum or what it is, is it? Yep. It is. Okay. Yep, it is. Machined okay. in the, yes. And nice. machined in house. Uh -huh. Nice. Uh, Kent Wolf asked, can you please expand on how to use the Switch Pro for the ignition? You want to jump in? Okay. I think <laughs> yeah. I, that was, that's, no, that's a great question because that concept is actually kind of why Built this one into was that born. One, yes. So why don't you give the, the text? Yeah, so basically there's a light blue wire coming off of this harness called the ignition wire. And typically you would connect that to an ignition source on the vehicle. A lot of times just the back of the accessory outlet cigarette Which you got to have simulated works. here, I saw. Exactly, yeah, right. we have it simulated there. And, and then if the switches are programmed to be ignition control, they will only work when the ignition is on. Uh, if you program a switch to be battery, then that switch will work regardless all the time w so, without an ignition source. So, so here, like for instance, schematic of what so if, you, if I turn ignition off, yep. they all turn off except this dome light ah, I program okay. to be battery. And also the backlighting goes out and then ignition back on, the backlighting comes back on. And then the switches will yep. function again. So can you give? But us the only thing time? is, right now the app is connected, so it actually overrides the ignition signal. So that way, if you're out camping and you're in your tent, you can actually operate all switches. You don't have to have the ignition on. But give give the example so, here of the ignition and start, because that's what the that's the, what question the primary was. question was. Okay. So about how uh, to wire that and how to program it. So battery and then. So on this one. Well, actually, what you do, you program the ignition switch to be battery controlled. And then, so it'll function all the time. And then the output of that switch, you actually connect to the input of your ignition wire. So when you press your ignition, and it's not programmed in this one at the moment, but when you turn the ignition on, it actually turns the whole panel on. And it basically then... And oh, like wakes it up. all the other yeah, switches. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So you got to have ignition on, and then, like I said, you feed it back into itself, and then that basically activates the panel, and then you can do start and. Oh, so, so that would be a anything. momentary button. button. And okay. then yeah. how this is yeah. programmed. This is actually programmed to simulate. You know, you turn the ignition on. That satisfies the need for the ignition signal. 
So you battery feed the ignition here, which then satisfies the panel's need for ignition. And then you push the start button and hold it until the vehicle starts and then let off. Yeah. And on that topic also, if you're wiring a buggy and that's how you intend to start it, that there were some safety concerns. So Robert and his team actually programmed in a way that the panel can be locked out. So you can essentially do a key combination. With a four pin code. Yeah, four oh. pin code. So you type it in. So that you can leave the video. Yeah, that yeah. would have been one of my concerns. Right. Right. So, Anybody hops in, they're like, oh, right. 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 Well, exactly. Yeah. Because fundamentally, unless yeah. there's a hidden kill switch and we try to, but we built this so that that wasn't really necessary. So you can just lock it out. And then there would only be two ways. You could either put in your pin, you know, your key, your key combination at this touch panel or from the app, log in through and put your password yeah. in and then start your vehicle. So either way, someone needs your permission and your, your key information. That's great. In order That's to really good to know. And yeah. you can also program in a time delay. To where let's say you make it 10 minutes after you turn the ignition off it locks the panel oh. so you're not constantly having, having to, to go unlock real. it yeah, mm -hmm. so if you know you're that's gone good. for a longer yeah. period of yeah. time and by the way yeah. that was why i knew that question would come up because we have so many people that want to put in our aluminum dash and just gut their mm -hmm. jeep um this i knew this was going to be the one that they really liked so yeah. great and question tommy dykstra commented that he's using two of the 12s to run every single thing in his Jeep and he's oh, racing yeah. wow. his Jeep. And another viewer commented that those switches are highly, he's an engineer, so he commented that they're highly vibration tolerant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Make them suitable for race. There we yes. go. Oh. There we go. We got lots of uh, educated people out there watching mm -hmm. today. Oh, uh, Debbie's got another Fred question. Need to update software version occasionally. Um, Before the app. Every once in a while, yeah, like there might be a app update. Well, actually more so when, you know, Apple is pretty solid with their app. Like, I don't think we've changed anything in like five years, but then Android, you know, every year they might, what like Samsung might do something that does is not really within the Bluetooth protocol. And then we got to go back and Tony then... looks like he's experienced that at some then, point in time. This stuff drives me Put crazy. in a, a little fix or something. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. sometimes... But we're on do, top of it. Yeah, you know. they do a, plat a platform update where all of a sudden it's changing, like, securities, permissions, that sort of thing. Then sometimes we fall into that. But by and large, um, really, the only time that our app has to be updated in terms of for functionality is when... Uh, we'll get when Google or some, when they contact us and say, as an app developer, we're changing this and yours needs to basically meet whatever the new criteria is. And so we have a group of programmers that sit down and, yeah. and conform. Okay. And we upload. So I don't, I mean, I have one of these, but I don't know how to work it, obviously. Um, the app is only for changing the color and moving what button does what? I mean, what do you need the app for? No, it's basically you can control your switches off and on, but also do all the programming. Okay, so that's so where every you're selecting, single, whether it's momentary or mm -hmm. the, yeah. the yeah. list that you were reading me. Right. Yeah, right. so right. there is actually, through the panel itself, you can do about five different functions, like on, off, momentary, flash, strobe, and memory. You don't need the app for that. The memory I but, like. I, you yeah. showed me that earlier. <laughs> and then uh, all the, uh, the other more complicated stuff, we just need a screen to... To do the programming and, yeah. i mean that sets us apart from some other things that are in the marketplace is the fact that not only do we use the app to program but we encourage the use of the app for controlling so perfect example i'm always i will be sitting at the campfire and i'll need to run back to the jeep or the you know camping area and i'll need a sweatshirt because it's cold he can actually pull or i can pull the phone out of my pocket turn on our light bar so that it casts light over whatever, you know, our camping area. I can go rummage around, get my sweatshirt and turn it off. And nobody needs the keys. You don't need to get in the vehicle. You don't need to key the ignition. And the difference with interfacing with the app is the fact that there are, let's say that this light bar is only program for ignition. So theoretically, the touch panel would only allow it to function if the keyed ignition was were on. But when you are app connected, Bluetooth connected, it overrides the need for an ignition yeah, signal. So, so you can it. literally just pull it out, turn it on, you know, turn the light back off, and the and the process is over without ever getting the keys and all of that. And the range is about fifty feet. Okay. Plus or minus. We've okay. seen more. As um, long as you don't mount it like on top of metal. 
or anything like that to switch channel because <laughs> the, the Bluetooth antenna is actually in the back here. Oh, gotcha. And see, we don't we actually go through the trouble of machining it out and filling, and it, filling it with it. epoxy so that way it's the going radio through. waves right. are going Not everywhere. Metal. Yeah. But if you mount it like this, it'll it'll bring yeah, the reception down a little bit. But uh, okay. Okay. What are the questions we have? asked if the app is the only way to program the unit or can you do it directly via a USB cable or other cable? Yeah, so limited functions just through the panel, which are actually, you know, let me get my paper here. So through the panel, you can do on off momentary battery ignition, flash, strobe, low voltage disconnect, and a memory function. And that's done and just by holding a, buttons actually, or? You know, these actually have our, our, our um, patented, what we call racer touch um, cover on. But right here in the center, I'll grab the, the nine. There's a programming button. switch. A, See, we actually oh, left a the hole there. there. So oh, you, right here, you can actually feel it. It's just a tiny pinhole type button, but you push it. When you push and hold or push in a series, and I confess, yeah. I haven't done it this way in so long, <laughs> but the panel will actually flash at you and indicate, and the orange light comes on, the pinhole light, and indicates you're in programming mode. And at that point, there's um, in the instructions, it'll say, okay, press which switches you want to be um, on off or momentary. Default is always on off. So you would then only select the switches that you want to be momentary. Then you push the programming button, and it's sort of a, oh, a toggling okay. through the series. Yeah. Okay. All the lights yeah. will flash a certain amount of and time. And it will count, so indicating you know what, step. what step you're at. Okay. But I lose so. track. I look away. I, you know, so. So I, I you just pointed something out that um, looks new to me. I don't remember the orange light being in the middle right there. Is that where it's always been? Yeah. I thought it was yeah, down. I thought it was down in the corner or something. These guys, why don't mm. you talk about what these orange lights oh, do? Oh, yeah. Ours, the programming light and the Bluetooth. Also, if you're Bluetooth connected, that one, instead of being orange, it will be blue. Ah, uh, but okay. the Racer Force actually has some some key lights down at the bottom. Maybe that's what you're That, that might be what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah, so basically the difference is, so on the 9100, we have three lights on the power module. Ignition, light input and a trigger input so and no indication on the switch panel okay on the 12 we only put one ignition light ah, gotcha. here that indicates you have ignition but then we have lights down here which are awesome. for Probably. when you're you have a light signal meaning you turn your lights on in your vehicle so it dims the backlighting which is really so, nice if yeah. you've ever driven at night you see right. this thing like glaring exactly. in the face and then we have a low voltage uh, light so it's called alert so if your voltage drops below 11 volts it starts to flash because if you have the low voltage disconnect enabled it'll turn everything off at 11 volts right. to we save your battery so that you're not that guy so if you yeah. if you leave all your lights on By and you know and it's a party time the next morning the vehicle isn't going to start so our system you, will actually yeah. you know that you're using up more current than your alternator is putting out right. Right. You have a deficit yeah. where right. your battery is so just tell you that. So that, you know, for, for the, the average Jeep and out overlanding kind of guy, gal, I want to make sure I'm being clear. Yeah, uh, we do have a lot of gals okay, watching. Right? <laughs> um, that will, that's a signal of the, you know, we're about, we're going to shut down because we don't want to waste your, your. Okay. So yet. this is the one I have. So you're telling me if I'm playing my radio and it's not, running through this it's still watching the voltage would that still warn me or only what's connected through here it's watching it'll this. warn you but i won't turn shut off it off the radio it, yeah won't shut it off if me. it's not wired through okay yet. okay yeah. but then for for the guys who are racing we know that especially in the smaller side by sides they you know they it can't keep up their stator doesn't keep up if they've got if it's a night base yeah. oh, generally speaking right I, you know i'm sorry i'm generalizing but that's something that's important because then if they're seeing that light, they might want to turn something yeah, off. Need, that's not yeah, that critical. Low shedding, yeah, you know. um, and, and let things catch back up. Yeah, right, exactly. And you know that's something that we I hear often. My my staff hears is the fact that the the drivers of specifically of race cars love it because this system is self diagnosing. Because if you have if if there's a short or there's an overcurrent condition. And it will actually, the LED indicator above the switch will flash three times and shut the circuit down. 
Well, it's already labeled. You already know what that what circuit is, is controlling. Right. So yeah. getting out there and tracing the wire, you're not out there with a flashlight for hours trying to trace a wire and figure out where the short is or where the overcurrent is. It'll tell you what you're looking for. There's a pin out. Every one of our power modules has, in fact, this one's about to get a, a new wardrobe change as soon as we get in. We Everybody liked the red so much <laughs> that we're doing. We, we They're in production right nice. now. But there's a pin out on every power module. I see that. Yeah. And it will tell you, you know, so that you can actually trace the wires and know exactly where you're going to. And any fault will automatically reset. So we haven't so, talked about that. So let's talk about that. So say it's okay. a fan, right? Yeah. A stick gets in there. What, what happens? It, the output will turn off if it exceeds the current limit. So there's two different uh, limits. There's continuous limit. So if you set it at 20 amps, if it sees 21 amps for half a second, it turns it off. But if you first turn it on, there's also inrush allowance. So like a 20 amp fan can, can have up to like 120 or 140 amps of inrush for a very short, short period, period of time. time. Yeah. And it, it allows it uh, for like 100 milliseconds or something like that. And then, but if it were to trip, like, so like a dead short, it actually knows the difference. So a dead short, it shuts off within 10 microseconds, honestly, which is even faster than that's a fuse. Quick, yeah. That's why nothing can really get damaged in here because the control limits are so tight. It doesn't allow for things to Well, and up. sometimes when you're working on stuff, you're not very careful yeah, and exactly. clicking stuff together. So these outputs, you can short them out all day long and it doesn't hurt. That's cool. And so, like I said, the, the output will turn off, the indicator will flash three times, and then you can just try turning it on again. You can do it a million times. And, and does it have something like with the fan, you know, you're not as worried about a light, but with a fan where it would try and restart itself mm -hmm. that waits a certain amount no, of time? No, it doesn't have that. Okay. So you would just see that it's out and you could try mm -hmm. restarting it again. Right, right. Okay. And then what about um, the system working with like temperature controlled fans? How does right, that work? so we can do that too. So the the 9100 has two trigger inputs basically, and this one has three trigger inputs, and they can be programmed active high or active low. So a 12 volt signal on a trigger input here. So let me get actually get back to these LEDs. These are for the triggers. So trigger one, trigger two, tr trigger three. We don't have anything programmed on these, but so you can take a wire off your temperature switch. Hook it up to the trigger wire, Which and this then one here, has, right? if this one trips, it turns on this output. See, actually, if I turn these, see? Gotcha. Now, the nice thing is, so this is your automatic function. So let's say you're overheating. It's like, hey, my fan isn't coming on. Maybe my temperature switch broke. Well, you can just turn it on manually. Or if it's on and you're... You're going to, you know, through a river crossing. Right, you don't want the fan You want going. it off, you just turn it off. Okay. You just need to remember to turn it back turn on. Turn it back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, with manual control, you, you'd have to be a, li a little careful in this, in this okay. case. Fortunately, huh? you've got a tech uh, back home. That's yes, I answering do. Some of the a questions. lot of the questions. Good. Oh, good, good. good. <laughs> but, uh, Tyler Tycho. Uh, asked how long the touch panel lasts before the keys start to fade. Like, will the image oh. on the keys fade away over time? That's so, a question. Do you want to take it or actually, you want me to? Let me give a grab an overlay. Someone, yeah, is there some in there or just in the box? There you go. So what we do is actually they're printed on polycarbonate material, which is pretty tough. And it's actually uh, printed from the back. So if I take one of these and peel it so off there's here, there's nothing on the surface which of the polycarbonate. It's all high quality 3M underneath stickers. But see, they're printed from the back. Oh, so what so you're touching isn't so, actually wearing. Yeah, it'll no never oils ever. No from your hands. Rubble. No grease from your fingers, your gloves. Nothing, and they're and I that mean, just five sticks. to seven years before there would ever be intense. In fact, it, because this was a conversation we happened to have had earlier today, for any kind of UV interference. It says typical polycarbonate, and that's with intense direct sun. You've got five to seven years before there would be any type of potential fate. And it's still not so, hitting the back. Yeah, right. It will, okay, so how do you put that on? Is there another thing, that, or do you just stick it you right just on top? Stick them right on right so, on what top. it is, it's a semi permanent adhesive. So, I can actually, yeah. let's see, if I took this cover off of here. 
Yeah, he's getting it. You know, it, these are the same labels, so. Oh, yeah, so they're not, just fall they're off. not no, coming off. Oh, no. And if you do want to remove it, yeah. you just start kind of carefully <laughs> pick at it There's if you technique. had to replace okay. it. Okay. You know, and then we. You know, so we explain what you're holding. What What is that cool little deal? What's it called? It's called the Racer. <laughs> this is the Racer Touch 12. This is the Racer yeah. Touch 8. These are patented. They actually, we just recently got our certificates from them, but they are actually patent protected. Um, can I tell them what I call it? I call it the finger finder, but I'm not aware of that because it has a more professional name. They were designed for people who are either, you know, it's heavy bounce on the road and you're, right. you're trying to get, you know, to the right switch and or gloves. So by it, it allows actually raise and relief so that you can get your finger right. in there and know exactly. Oh, yeah. You don't even have to precise. look and find it. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, so, and if you don't want mine's to run mounted, it, I can't. I don't have that on there. You just yeah. gave me one, right? But it, yeah, I've had trouble and I've turned on other stuff that I wasn't yeah. meaning to. Right. So yeah, that's going to be really And nice. if you want it to look cleaner, like inside a nice, whatever, tender truck or whatever, you just leave it off or whatever. It depends. Because I said they just kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Press on. Okay. We have more questions. So. <laughs> voltage question from BKTJ is the low voltage cutoff configurable. Say I want to cut off at 12 volts or something higher than 11 volts, I think you might have mentioned. Yeah, not at this time. It's not configurable, but it's going to be in the future, probably one of the options. And also, we we'll probably have something to do like load shedding where you can choose what stays probably on, maybe prioritize. like something critical, you know. That's actually a way we get a lot of our programming is from inquiries like this, where we take notes. We basically right. take a wish and list. And you go, huh, we didn't think of that. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, when we first built, when we built the predecessor to this, which was the SB8100, um, RGB LEDs weren't necessarily as reliable as we wanted. So we made green because Jeep backlighting is typically some variation of green. Yeah. And then, but then it became people wanted blue to go with the Toyota kind of, and, and Chevy to kind of go with the ice blue. And then the red, because the side-by-side -side guys said they, they can see red best in the dust. So at that point, after we had those three different colors, we thought the heck with it, the technology had gotten better. And so now they're all RGB. So any of you who are concerned, we actually have one Jeep that, well, and a forerunner, they may or may not have um, magenta backlighting. Um, there's a couple of race cars. That looks yeah. pretty close yeah. to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. yeah, that's but, more like. Yeah, but basically, ready. what you can do is is not that this matters to a technical question like that, but you can on our app screen. There's a page that is a giant color wheel. I can and go you to can it right take here. Your maybe. finger See if I can. and oh. and 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 pinpoint a color and then adjust how much black or white so that you can uh, the intensity of it. It's pretty cool. And so So we go to LED backlight setting. Yeah. There are four presets. There's red, green, blue, and white. But if you want like something. something besides a generic mm, royal yep. or you know, then Yeah, actually the let me okay. So here we have either we have presets, so yep. red. I already said yeah. green, blue, or white. Uh or really see it. actually, I can. And here we can also adjust the intensity. Can you see that pretty well? Oh, yeah. there you go. Step back. So the inten this is the oh, intensity that's, adjustment. Now I can really see it. Yeah. For when your light input is on, so you can adjust it. Oh. You know. So, but so. so that tap the bar. Also work as a dimming feature if you're driving at night. For the you don't want the lights. So you can pre yeah you can yeah. preset it such that when it sees that your head you would you would use the white lights wire. Yeah, it is right automatic. Now. But yeah. then that setting can be adjusted, whatever it goes to. So then as soon as it sees 12 volts on that, that your headlights have come on, then it will dim it just like your instrument panel cluster where you usually have it set. Yep. This will do the same thing. Touch the bar. Okay, touch, touch the, the bar. bar. So we touch the bar. <laughs> oh, there's the color wheel. So, here, so what color? What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Okay. Well, turquoise, we have a, do pretty we like have her a preset. But... Do a blue. Do a turquoise blue turquoise like her. Blue. Okay, let's see how that one came out. Oh, there we go. There yeah. we go. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> um, I, I have a, a razor, and what we've done with the wrap is actually done our company logo, in it, but it's magenta and black instead of red and black. You know that there's a magenta backlighting. On uh, yours, yeah, yeah magic. He runs yeah. his all red because it goes with the company colors. <laughs> Minus paint. Nice. It goes with that. 
We our, have something else. Our viewer, Zach Gupto, asked if these were worth running for just auxiliary lights or is it more meant for fans, lockers, et cetera? This one. This, this one. one. Yeah, we just Absolutely. talked about that. Yeah. You know, that this has a, a more entry level price point, right? That, that right. Yeah, is for that kind of right. function. This system sells for $599 and it is. It, it was designed originally to power specifically things like LED lights um, and lockers and a compressor if you kind of went to that level. Um, but I, I, here's, I mean, I work for the company, but I will say this. If you're spending a fair amount of money on good quality lighting, then having one system that you can wire them all up to rather than having a bunch of individual toggles or, or even manufacturer supplied switches, you have it all in one location it's fail safe and you don't if you don't have eight we have people who will perhaps have four things our sheet of legends actually sorry i look ill prepared but i'm really not <laughs> um there are four blanks that come we like right here on the sheet um every system comes by the way every system comes with 100 legends that are in horizontal orientation because this tip is the typical orientation you can rotate it like if you're putting it in the pillar of a jk um, but they all come with, a, it's two sheets of the polycarbonate legends of what we consider kind of the most common request. And there are four blanks. So if you don't have, but you're looking to grow your vehicle over time, because not everybody has the, you know, the dollars to immediately walk out and buy, you know, several thousand dollars worth of lights and a, a $599 switch panel system and possibly pay someone to install. Um, if you start smaller, you have legends sure. and we're always happy to, you know, sure. if, you need, if you need two more, we, we always yeah. have them. Um, in stock, this this is the vertical orientation because these are actually not square. The rec slightly so rectangular. Like this. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. we have um, kind of one of the common applications is right here. Oh you, yeah, oh, all you yeah. do people will recognize the vintage <laughs> right here. So yeah. this is a typical. Um, this is a an A pillar replacement panel that we buy, you know, from Rugged for Ridge. the JK. Um, but then we machine them out. So we have a jig and we gotcha. actually will cut it so that it snaps right in, in there. it's a snug fit. And then there is hardware, obviously, that holds it. Hold but it. yeah, it would snap right in here and that's when you would use the vertical legend so that they're right reading. Um, and then put the brackets on the back. Um, so the I wanted to show everybody how thin it is, right? So you can, just like they have it here, mount it right on top of something if you want yeah, to. A lot of people do that I too, mean, yeah. it's it's, like in a side by side, you right. just stick it right to the yeah. dash, right? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily require you to cut the hole to yeah. actually put it in. And actually, mine right now, I, I wasn't sure where I wanted to put it, and I just velcroed mine. Oh, <laughs> it stays. That, yeah. So <laughs> it's, you know, until I right. figure out where I really want it, right. Right. Um, there's a lot of cool. It's so thin and small that it's really easy to do that. Right. Yeah. So I, I want to make sure I mention that. Uh, our viewer, Zach Guptill, he had previously asked if a wiring diagram was included with your units. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, oh, my gosh, it would have made my life so much easier <clears throat> with my light bar. I'm running 11 ox lights and four switches. It must be oh. another. Right? Yeah, and he might have oh, individual yeah. switches. Instead yeah. <laughs> well, um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to get this information to you as fast as we can. <laughs> and, and by the way, these are available on the Generate website. We have both in stock, so... And on that note, Austin Schroeder asked if those price that pricing is the complete package yes. for the eight and the twelve. Well, uh, except yeah. for a, a possible vehicle specific kit. The pricing on the uh, twelve, we never I never even addressed that. This sells for nine eighty and this sells for five ninety nine. Um, and what Robert's referring to is the kit is universal. It comes with a basic um, plate, if you don't mind, I'll, yeah. I'll pull this out. It comes with a basic plate that has some notches um, actually machined in for some pretty standard applications, some Toyota and Jeep applications. So the power module actually would mount to this. Um, Somewhere. That's actually the, the JK yeah. bracket that goes above the battery. Yeah. But so, people and, use it also on Toyotas. Right. Sure. It's or, a really common um but if you had let's say um a, a jl or a jt we have a different shape because there's there's a different position well for there's it. not a lot of room under the hood no, we were talking about that earlier right yeah. exactly um, but all told yes the complete the, the kit is complete you get legends you get uh, the power module all the wiring the harness the fuse battery cable the communications cable um with this one you also get the racer touch piece 
um, yeah, you can collect this box, this nine by 10 inch box and go to town and it's everything is in there. You don't need to supply anything else. There's no need to run to the hardware store. And there's no annual or monthly subscription no, it's for free. anything. To it's free. The equipment. Nope. Yeah, and the app is free. It's free. For you. Uh, Jen Wright Dave asked if you can switch pro, uh, switch pros, oh, switch pro, I'm sorry, facilitate dual batteries. Will it facilitate dual battery setup? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty versatile. You just got to figure out what battery you want to hook the system up to and what your preference is with the disconnects. Yeah, so ours, but, we've got the big switch, right? You can go one, right. one and two, yeah. Oh, yeah. two, yeah. So you'd have to pick like what the primary battery is, right? Otherwise, right. it would disconnect it and, yeah. you know. So on that, I was, a lot of people have battery isolators that yes. have logic built in. Yes. You have to be very careful with those because if you're on the battery that it's trying to save and if you're drawing too much current it's just going to disconnect that thing and you won't have anything yeah because it's not charging it anymore because it thinks it wants to keep the driving battery yes. and then all your stuff will just yeah. turn off so you got to be yeah and careful. that's similar for those of you watching the genesis system is like that right. where it's trying to isolate the two batteries so if there's critical systems i would recommend connecting that to the main battery if you're running fans and stuff Right, stuff yeah. like that, because you don't want those turning off when you're racing. Yeah. Maybe you can answer sure. this one. Thomas Erke asked, where could you mount these in a Jeep? So most common is they mount them fairly close to the battery right under the hood. Um, that is the most common. Obviously, you know, if you've got a side-by-side -side or something else, you, you've got all kinds of places you can mount them. Um, and they control themselves. This? Yeah. So how long is the cord? We, we have 11. a... 11 feet. Oh, 11 feet. So you have, there's just off the back yeah, of the touch panel, long. there's about a six inch pigtail with a connector. Then this, this cable here, which we call it. Yeah, that's our communication that one. cable. Yeah. Yeah. And then these are our and output. And where's the battery? The battery cable is like two feet. Uh, the 12, it's three feet. And the 9100, it's two feet. Okay, so let's show this. Yeah. We have a mounting solution that we sell on our website. I don't know that you guys necessarily sell I don't sell know it, that we have But that. there is a, and it's specifically, it's coved for the JK. So it can go as far up as, and I know some of the Chevy guys will put it in um, the sunglass holder. So you have enough, uh, enough footage of, you know, this cable here. And, and one thing about this cable, it's, it's specialty technology that it shouldn't be cut or extended. We can't, we will happily make you a custom cut. Um, if it's long, you know, usually there's a small fee, but it has technology in there and shielding and all kinds of. Yeah, right here. Stuff that it needs, needs to handle serial data. Yeah. So, yeah. so, it's, so it needs uh, to be one. That's tough. Run. That's real tough. And we decided but, to go with yeah, something is, really, yeah, really shielded. heavy duty. Because it's just, you know, installation, yeah. engine compartment. You so this this robust. one, the eight the eight button is a two foot cable and the other one oh, no, is a three both, foot. They're both, no, oh, they are? No. Two foot. You no. may have had a custom one made, Tony. Oh, really? <laughs> no, Laura, this one's longer. This oh, one's well, that, okay, that's the three foot. This is five. The, okay. So that's for the racer for us. Okay. Sorry, got we got a, we got the boxes on the opposite side. Yeah, so oh, this, one, yeah. this one goes we with did. this. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's yeah. slightly. So here we go. There we go. Oh, so hold them up like this so everybody can see. There you go. They're just slightly different in length. They're very well built, and uh, well, the the what I was trying to point out was this is as far as you can go away from the battery, right? Unless you build your own stuff. So, um, yeah. And we we tend to do that too. If somebody asks and they have a specific location they want to put it, we can make a custom battery cable. We're we're never opposed to that. We're only limited by the run, the gauge of the wire, and what the run can be. Can be you know, yeah. and still be able yeah. to handle the hundred. Yeah, like more. Jamie, you've got your batteries in the back. So your battery's not a front, right? So that, that changes. But my switch is front. Because the cord's because 11 feet long. Yes. Deb, what do you got? Uh, John Miller, does the system self-reset after an over-amp shutoff of a circuit? Yes, it does. So if there's a short or overcurrent condition, the output shuts off. The indicator will flash three times, and you can try again. 
they're, the MOSFET, they're self-resetting. So yeah. they will continue to attempt to be available again, and they will turn back on with your, you know, if, if you're attempting to turn it back on. You have to manually be, right. press it again to but turn it back on. once the condition is cleared. So whatever the condition was that caused it to actually shut down, once that condition is gone, I mean, you can tap, 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 and it will only power back on once the condition is cleared. Uh, our viewer, Sean Sullivan, on the JL, where do you recommend the ground location? Directly on the negative terminal of the battery. That battery. answer is the same no matter what you are <laughs> Whether it's a side-by-side -side or a Dodge matter. truck, right? Straight to the battery. Robert, the battery. Can you explain to people why that's important because we have we get this question often and people want to sidestep. They want to go to a grounding bar. They want to go to something and there's a very specific reason why we have that requirement and i want him to give it to the to the to the viewers because it's important and i think that oftentimes it's unless it's explained by somebody with his level of expertise i think something gets lost okay but tell people why that well important. so the battery is just a huge capacitor and capacitors are used to filter stuff spikes in the electrical system and in the automotive system electrical system there's this huge all kinds of noise and 200 volt spikes that can cause some real damage to sensitive electronics but like I said the battery will filter all that out so you want to be as close as possible to the battery and preferably the the same ground because even if you're five feet away on the frame even a couple of ohms can make a difference in you know not being able, able to filter out noise. I know even on the EFI systems you know for the engine mm -hmm. they all say straight to the battery yeah, yeah exactly for that same yeah. reason yeah and and to speak to that we have people call in all the time and ask about extending extender extending wires simply put anything that's in this harness here can extend away i mean do it the right way you know, heat solder, heat shrink, you know, or use some heat shrink. Yeah, nuts, no, no system. wire nuts. Uh, probably not. <laughs> um, but these, it's it's this cable, which actually is this one. This one, yes. This one's the one that's sensitive. So if you need to mount this somewhere where you can't get, and, and you're going to need an extended battery cable and you can't get, you can extend the ground. It's an 18 gauge wire, you know, right here. It's the black one that's in this harness on both. That's never an issue because it's far more important for you to get it to the battery. Okay. What other questions have you got? Uh, we have one viewer ask if the individual switches can be dimmed individually. Ah, no. not at this So time. for the backlighting, no, everything is. Uh, it's a whole the team. Same. It all goes at once. Yeah, and I think you, Alex, you can see it on this one. If you flip the lights or you zoomed in, so you see it dim down. So essentially, he's just simulated turning the headlights, headlights on. on. Yeah, and yeah. so it's going to dim it down and yeah. and it, that's adjustable in the app and you make it you adjust the brightness just like you would your instrument like you were doing earlier right. that intensity right. yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah exactly yeah and actually problem. there's a wide adjustment you can even go not only can you go less but you can also go brighter than the ignition setting and uh, right so, like 30 percent right isn't it yeah, oh, really? so if you want it even brighter than the normal the normal setting is like 70% with ignition on. And then when the light signal comes on, you can bring it all the way down to 10%, but up to 100% also, huh. if you want to go the other way. Interesting. Yeah, and I wanted to show, you know, you were showing me this earlier about, you know, turning on the blinkers and stuff. Oh, yeah. I was at, you know, we didn't even touch on that. Oh, <laughs> we kind of ran off in a different direction. So, so it, regardless of what, light bar, light brand, brand of lighting you run, you don't need to invest in the additional relay box to allow you to flash and strobe. Our power modules actually have that capability built in. So every single light, regardless of the brand, you can program it as a, um, I'm gonna do like this one here, I'm gonna turn this light on. So with a single touch, I've turned it on and it's going to stay on it steady, steady and on. That's bright. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, I know, look right down. I'm going to double tap it and I have programmed it and we're all going to see how I program that. Uh, I, it's what we, that pattern we call bursting strobe. We have folks who use this in the industrial, you know, in an industrial application for um, like anything that they've got to stop on the side of the highway or that. So I have programmed that in. The other option would be if I wanted this to be my primary and only function, 
then I would program that in the app to call one touch, like a one touch person. Oh, so program. it would do that right yeah, away. That's all it does. So that's, that's, that's how we program those. So like the side by side now. folks, um, there's probably, or do we have, oh, here, these are these programmed for, yeah. for turn signal. Yeah. So if I'm turning left, it's only, now the only thing that this switch is ever going to do, or this output is ever going to do is beacon flash. Um, same with this one, it's programmed because those are designated to be turn signals. However, as I showed you here before, this light bar can be on steady or bursting strobe as a double tap. Um, the whip, same thing, on steady, or if I double tap, it's going to show you a different pattern. It's going to show uh, you the same beacon. We have one other pattern and it's essentially a Halloween strobe. It's like, a, what is it, 12 strobes per second or something? It, it, it's well, so they're all super fast. about yeah. that, but it's, it's continuous, it doesn't yeah. stop. And it, so it's just like a, stro a Halloween strobe light. And people say, well, why would I want to do that? I don't know. But if you're at camp and you've got a buddy up on a hill and he can't find his way back, you can actually turn on any one of your, you know, bright lights and you can set it to a pattern and you can say, hey, look for, you know, the, the strobing wind. And then we'll be able to pick them. you out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. when you're up like in Glamis, you're up on the dunes. Yeah. You're looking, There's you're, a looking hundred lights down. up there. Yeah. So that's all built in. So you can flash strobe, bursting strobe. Let's do the dimming to um, demonstrate okay. the dimming. Do you want to? I don't know which one is programmed. Sorry. That's a good question. These. Okay, so that's another thing that's really oh, important. Oh, yeah, this is the one. Every You can program nearly every light, and you can step it down. So, so there's 100%, 50%, 10%. And it's gonna, it actually Wherever you let down. go, this one has the memory set so that it'll go back to wherever you left it last. So next time you turn it on, it's the same level. That's, that is really cool. It, you just hold it. You turn it on, hold it, and I went back to 100%. So now it always go to 100%. Right. That so is you really can, cool. So you can dim like in the moment, or you can dim select a setting that you like all the time. Like if you have rack lights that the only time you use them for, say, camp scene lights, and you don't want them at full brightness, you want them always at 50, you can set those just, just like Robert did. With You go into the app and enable the dimming output, or output dimming, excuse me, and say, okay, I want this light to be able to dim. And then you go in with first, and you also tell it that you're going to have it use memory. You go in, you set it for 50%, bam, you show up to your campsite, you push that button, those lights are going to come on at that yep. 50%, and they're going to stay at that unless you alter it from the Yeah, that's a that's a good approach. example because um, we've had that situation out camping, right? There's, hey, we're cooking dinner, we need a lot of light right now. Right. Now it's time to go sit by the fire, and we just want a light so you're not tripping over bushes right. and rocks yeah. to get back yeah. to camp, right? Yeah. So that's a great Exit. You know, right. I'm trying to put stuff down for people so that they can apply it, you know. Really right. too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I prefer to give tangible, you know, things that we can all touch. We've all yeah. done experiences we've had because it just, it gels better for me. I, you know, I'm yeah. more of a tactile kind yeah. of. Yeah, and one of my first questions was, you know, could, if you did both of these, could, you know, that be um, your hazard lights? So he just yeah. he just pushed the button. It's like, yep, sure can, you know. Push them on at the same Push time, and, yeah. and there you go. And then so. we have the root wag is in here, correct? Yeah, this one has some extra programming features, like a wig wag, so it goes so, so back oh. and forth. Okay. Yeah. So actually, uh, this the programming on the ninety one hundred that board is so full. We've been building that for a while, and you know we put in just about everything that we can, but. This big boy has a lot more room. So there are some special requests that we had when we were making this that we built into here. Um, what what else is, I, I mean, Wigwag is in there. Where's what my else? paper at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to use Too our, many features to remember. To use our Cliff's Notes. Or, or Sparks Notes is not the young, I think the younger people know Sparks Notes. Um, I, I know one of the things you mentioned to me earlier, and I don't know if we talked about it on here, was that this one, the dome light, you know, for this setup, had power on all the time. So okay. even if you turned off the ignition, exactly, yeah. that's on there all the right. time. Right, yeah. exactly. So it would be, it, we call that battery input. So when you go in one of the first, uh, second screen, I believe it's, I don't know if I'm sure. Yeah, battery or ignition input. So there are some things that you will only ever turn on when the ignition is on. Other things, typically auxiliary lighting, that kind of thing. Um, a refrigerator. If you've got an onboard fridge or any yeah. kind of a, you know, a test or something that's going to take... You would program that for battery input, and then that way, when you turn it on, even if you turn the ignition off, it's going to stay on and continue to feed power to it so that that doesn't shut off when you remove the key. Okay, so let's talk about that. So the, the reason to run your fridge through this would be that voltage cutoff. 
Exactly. Right? So, so it doesn't just drive the battery worry. down to zero. Some exactly. of them, I know, yeah. I know some of the, maybe the more well-known refrigerators have that built in, but there are others that don't. It depends on what level you buy in at. So you're exactly right. It's like, it will stay on and keep your meat and your dairy cold. But if you're going to run into the trouble of being, you know, unable to start your vehicle, it will shut everything off. Okay. So that would be another reason to run your stereo system through this as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. It, I just want to open people's minds on what, which is getting them more toward this one or two of these. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. 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 So. And one of our viewers, John Miller, commented this would make a great electronic control from trailer. Yes. Yeah, a lot of yes. people use them on trailers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, that, and that's right. and marine. We have a marine application uh, coming very soon. Um, yes, we actually know a whole, a, 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 a whole boatload of people, no pun intended, that use this in a vehicle that doesn't actually have a starter. They use it in a travel trailer. They use it in an RV, um, kind of in the rear. They use it in rooftop tents, that kind of thing where they're actually running a cable up because all you need is battery input. And as long as it can get a battery feed, you can satisfy the ignition signal by running it to the battery and then just having some sort of a cutoff. Yeah, your master so that, cutoff. Right, a master cutoff so that then at some point you can you can eliminate the power that goes Okay, so now, you're, now that you mentioned like the rooftop tent, I'm thinking about another application. Can I have a second one of these? Absolutely. You can. Yeah. Right. Right, yeah. so now you got one that's up there uh -huh. and one, okay. Right. We or see. people also just use their phones. Okay. They, oh, that's, that's right. That's another phone, solution. Yeah. But either, yeah, either way. Yeah. So we okay. do. We offer a system that we call a slave, a slave panel kit. And the common, the common application would be um, that, like a, let's just say a sprinter that's been converted into an RV. This is in the dash because they want to be able to control that while they're up and driving the vehicle. Yep. Uh, then when they go back into the back, the galley area, they can control the same outputs, it's, it's got to be the same outputs, but they can essentially have two different locations by which to control the accessories of the vehicle without running back and forth to the dash. Yeah. Um, something else that that, that just triggered is um, we also have, um, because I started thinking about immediately house lighting and when you can turn things on from different walls, you know, as you go through the house, we also have the ability in both of these to program basically a what would it be, an S, a single pull, double throw, single pull, triple throw. So let's say you have a light that has a low beam and a high beam. Um, you can actually, what we would do, what I would recommend is I would put it on this system, use one switch, um, maybe it's a light bar that has a colored backlighting. And I would put it on the same switch and wire two different circuits to that switch. And let's say I only, I, I can push it once and I can turn on the backlighting well, let's just say I never want, and this is an odd situation, but I never want the back lighting coming on or on at the same time I have the foreground lighting. I can push it a second time, and when I've identified those two in the relationship, it will automatically power down the first circuit and turn on the second mm. circuit that's on the same right. bus. So there are certain lights in the industry where a low beam and a high beam cannot be on yeah. at the same time. So that way, when you push the button, you turn on the low beam. If you push it a second time, it will shut down the, the low beam and turn on the high beam. Now, there are other brands like um, there's Rigid has a backlighting like a Radiant series. that has a colored backlighting and a foreground. That might be the case where you want them to be on together. Yeah, you can but, actually do yeah. the on on off right. function where Still. if I press the switch once, it turns on the backlighting. backlighting. If I press it again, it turns on the backlighting it and adds, the beam. Yeah, it adds that. Yeah. Gotcha. So in the second in the second push, you can program <clears throat> uh, and determine yeah, whether you want the, the Vision X has a light like that, you know, where it glows, and then you can turn right, on that. Right. Yeah. So then and then you can the choose if it turns off the outputs from the first touch, or if it leaves leaves them on. So what about okay in that case, if you have that kind of a light, because my headlights have that too, like the halo on oh, them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but that comes on with ignition. So is that another? thing that we can do so then you still have the high and low built in there but i want the halo to come on as well just with ignition is that uh or yeah would that i just mean be run if totally? you didn't want to connect it to the ignition you could definitely do something through could through, trigger, through maybe the panel through a trigger maybe wire it up through a trigger yeah that that's a possibility yeah, or maybe. or you know or like, like i said right, when you turn that button on that would initiate that Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, the other thing the is, uh, 
The yeah, there's a, we have a function called the power oh, app switch here. status. <laughs> as soon as the ignition comes on, you can program the switch to turn on. Okay. I think so we like have it on this light, one. Like a, like a dust light for the reason, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the, so the, the, the by, by ignition To on. meet the rules, right. that has to come on. Right. Yes. So what and these actually came on by themselves. That circuit, like for the amber, you know, the rear facing board, yep. as soon as it sees ignition, you'll program that circuit that usually controls it from here. It has to come on. It will automatically come on okay. as soon as it sees ignition. Okay. So, so that's, that's yeah. yep. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Because like that's got the light bar. Right. Yeah. And it has to come on when you yep. when the ignition is on. Right. Yep. So then it will come on. You program it and say the circuit that controls that will automatically come on as soon as it sees ignition. Cool. Well, through your fun conversation, you answered <laughs> the questions. So I'm going to go right to Clarence Jr. Okay. and ask what are the advantages of purchasing a Switch Pro system over one, say, like Spot? Okay. Okay. Do you, do you want to go there? Yeah, or? I think there are like three different areas. One was, uh, you know, the water proofness of this, the IP67 waterproof rating, which I believe they don't have. And then I know that the app on this, we have about a 50 foot range. I believe theirs just says it's for programming and not uh, It's not necessarily like a long, like for operation yeah. versus ours. I think our footprint And then the footprint, the size. yeah. I mean, is, uh, you know, with these two tiny. pieces yeah. here, and this is the larger of the two, this, this is it. So so we know because we've had jeeps of you know varying models and ages um there's not a lot of room under the hood and so by going with something that's three and a half by seven inches and only sticks out when you have the you know it only sticks up what three i think it's three inches, three inches off of here yeah. with the harness that's you don't it doesn't require a lot of room and specifically even if you look at the small one i can tell you based on that um that a pillar mount that i just showed you that is designed it's when it's scored it's scored to hold four rocker switches well in the space of four rocker switches you've got eight solid state you're not wiring relays you're not right you know so so really space is when space is an issue a tiny little panel that measures literally too high by four wide is something else that that i hear people come to us and say that's that's a big draw um you know and the fact that it, you can use this panel. It doesn't rely on a touch screen. We've had a lot of people who have terrible experiences with various types of touch screens. And so, um, you know. Well, especially when you have gloves on, right? Yeah. Touch yeah. screens are terrible right. with that. Yeah. And, if, yeah. and if dust gets behind yep. you, know, there's just, there's those, some of those things just structurally are not a design that we would go to. And we get people asked, will you ever make a touch screen? And the answer is simply, no, I, probably not. No, probably not. Yeah. For, for the obvious reasons that we know there may be, there could be a failure. Well, we they can say. use their phone then. That's well, right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, and there are people who run it. But <laughs> right, and, and exactly. one other question that that usually comes, people will say, well, I don't want to install the touch panel. I just want to use my phone and the power module. The problem is this. All of this is the master to everything, this touch panel. Really what happens is the phone communicates with it by Bluetooth and tells it what your desired output is, you know, your desired function is. This is the master. It then communicates with the power So they have to bury that in the glove box or something, right? People do. Yeah, people, they do. Want people, to. people do. And all we say is just remember that if you're putting metal behind the epoxy window, you know, there's epoxy windows because those are where the transmitters are, Bluetooth transmitters. If you impede that by putting metal behind it, it will lessen the distance at which you can communicate. And we don't really even know when it... it, it well, depends on how depends. thick it is. Exactly, and, right. what kind of material. Yeah. But pretty much, if you wanted to put this, like people will put it in the sunglass holder. There's no real metal up there. It's plastic. It's yeah. plastic behind it. And you want to mount your phone on your dash, conceivably, you can fully run it from that. But there's also a safety factor there. By having this... Let's just say, uh, you know, you're standing on the edge taking a selfie and the phone goes over, the phone gets into water, the phone gets broken in some way or another. You can always operate everything from this panel as a fail safe. So that's kind of the other thing. I still don't trust, and it's because I'm old school, I don't trust my phone to do everything that I know it can do because there are just some things that at my age I know better. <laughs> so for us, it's a great convenience, but we don't wholly ever rely on that. Okay, so now let me ask you this because this is kind of my application. I bought I bought this, mm -hmm. and now I go, man. I just don't have the space to mount this. Can I use this one and just forego some of the buttons? Well, mm, so we there is an option of using it 
eight hasn't switch. Been tried. Has <laughs> a, <laughs> to be honest with you, it hasn't been no, tried. No, no, listen to me. Most people be there like, is an no, option crazy. of uh, <clears throat> using that as a slave. So oh, on this one, the slave, you can either use another 12 well, or another use, eight. Uh, so you could do something with that. If you, if, but if that would mean this has to be some. But yeah, it still has to be connected. It has to be connected. So it has okay. to be within that 11. Okay, just like we talked connected. about. Right. So, but yes, you're right. Conceivably, you could stash this somewhere and use the secondary panel. It would actually have a cable. So there's a where these connect. There would be like a little Y cable. Another, T. Exactly. Yeah. There's a T that they would both connect into, so that the power module module knows that it's getting communication okay. from both one or the other of the okay. rooms. Okay. Now, the one thing we haven't talked about was um, you described certain buttons have higher amperage versus other right, ones. Right. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so on the 9100, mm -hmm. we have uh, four 20 amp circuits, one, two, three, four, and four 35 amp circuits. Uh, and it's like this switch is for this and output. Could, I mean, it's could it all be dedicated. these or is it is it always these? Is yeah, it always... it's always these four. On okay. this, on okay. this system 20 okay. amps. specifically. 35 amps. They're a fixed position. So the left half and of the panel will always be the 20 amp circuits. The right half will always be the 35s. Okay. This bad boy over here is a totally different. Totally theory. different. Okay. So Let's it has four 35 amp circuits, uh, 11 15 amp circuits, and one 30 amp circuit. And a low side driver. And a low side driver if you want to switch something to ground. Mm -hmm. And That's the nice thing is you can configure any output to any switch. So what's so, the kind of thing that you would switch to ground? What 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 application is that? Uh sometimes like a camera system, they have like an input that needs to be ground huh. instead of a 12 volt volt. So something like that. Uh some computers I believe have some inputs too to like that. That are yeah ground that to trigger activated. bands or something. Also, some of the lights some manufacturers i think they still do have like a trigger wire that needs to be taken to ground also huh. so, okay okay but and but so you were going to say yeah, I was like, yeah these so, could be anywhere right these big ones yeah so anywhere. i can put the high amperage on the bottom row uh or whatever configuration and then you got to remember you have five different outputs so i can do like talk about the on on off function i can if i press this once i can have this output come on mm -hmm. and if i hit it again of course it's not programmed like that right now i can have one of the extra outputs come on oh to turn uh, something else on yeah right. so the exactly. question we gotcha. is, so two lights versus two, four lights yeah, yeah. Be like but 12 switches but why do you have 17 circuits well, that is because if you have a multifunction light or a light that has multi multiple capabilities, yeah. you can then use one switch and, you know, and use two. So up to five of these switches can control two, like two functions or two. two items, yeah, I think right? that's or, my Jeep. I have it where it yeah. turns on two bumper lights. And then when you press it again, it turns on two other oh, lights. And then you press it again and it, turns, it, it just between? adds them. Okay. And then it turns them all off. Right, yeah. oh, right. on the third push. Yeah. yeah. Or what you can do is you can combine like, outputs like two 35 amp circuits if you tie the wires together you got 70 amps oh and you can program switch one to turn on both outputs so uh, one switch 70 amps and you didn't this do that same kind of a feature that's no. only over here yeah so if you need that kind of thing you really need right. to be looking at this system so. and you're not really losing an output because you'll just use one off your spare an extra spare what do you have i think we well, had well, we're, we're running over time oh, we've yeah. got a couple Really good question. Okay, so okay, okay. Yeah, and, and I know we're and talking about stuff yeah. that people okay. are thinking, you yes. He says, don't laugh, but my seat heaters are wired into my switch pro. Oh, yeah. Yes. They That's barely heat. Should I increase the voltage output at the switch? What did he say? He it, said they, they barely heat. They barely they heat. Get very hot. So, so maybe not enough amperage. No, it should be, yeah, I don't know. What I would do is hook it up directly to the battery, see how the heat is, and then try again on the Switch Pro. To, and make sure that that's not it, set for dimming either, because if it's, you know what I mean, if it's set for dimming, I know that's kind of an out there concept. Yeah, so but... we can actually 
adjust heated seats also just by doing this dimming, uh, thing. This yeah. dimming function. So you might want to check to make sure dimming isn't activated. Because yeah, if you left it at 10%, then you yeah, only get 10%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. could so be... Uh, oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. don't laugh, Craig. I have four heated seats. I had to go with in my razor. I have a four-seater razor. I went with this system because I have four heated seats. So I'm right uh, with you. Okay, so let me ask you this. In this in this heated seat application, mm -hmm. you wouldn't necessarily see the dimming like you would in the light. The, well, does what it, you does do it, see... You? We'll yeah, you. so watch the indicator. Okay. So if I turn it on, stall it, yep. fast flash. So that's and telling that, you it's in dim mode. Yeah. No, it's, and it's, uh, as it slows down, it's lessening the amount of like intensity that's power. coming out here. Yeah, okay. the frequency. Because what I was wondering flashing. is if he could just hold the button and see if it flashes, right, for a seat heater. Uh, yeah, to see if it's set for yeah. dimming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. That, that LED indicator. But, but he wouldn't know whether it's on 10 or 50 or 100. Well, you can tell by the flash. The flash. Right. The okay. So it kind of it slows down. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can tell. We're happy to help. I mean, that's something. Okay. The, one, the one thing I would suggest is that he makes sure he's with the vehicle. Um, because we can sort of abstract, but um, it's hard for us, like a lot of times for us to, to troubleshoot. It's best if we can say cause and effect. We say, do this, what do you see, what do you get? Um, but yeah, no, we're we're, we, okay. can, we can handle that. If, I mean, hopefully we can come to a resolution that would be... Um, do you guys always answer the phone or does it go to voicemail? Um, the only time it goes to voicemail is either after Both? hours or when all three... There are three incoming lines. We have a six-line phone, but when all three are coming in and they're all being talked on or answered, then you go to voicemail. Rarely, and, you know, I'm not going to lie, there are weekends that everything that's left in voicemail actually gets translated into an email. And if it's a hot rush, um, I'm going to say that 90% of the time somebody will get a weekend call. It's, I mean, it's that important. Because they're troubleshooting something. Exactly. Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, they've got, they, they and we all know what it's like, right? You're not that they want their tracking number from their order, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're working on something. We get those. You're working on something and you're excited and you want to finish it. It's I'm Saturday. Gonna it's like, I'm not going to wait till Monday yeah. to hear it back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yep. So we try to do she our... One more thing. Okay. Was... okay, where are we at? Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So thank you. A few more questions. You can ask us offline. Okay. okay. Perfect. And, um, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody, for Thanks watching. For yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. I'm glad everybody liked this topic. That's yeah. great. I know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again. I'll be back on Thursday with another special guest. So tune in then, and uh, we'll have more Tech Talk.